I am delighted to welcome and introduce the resource person of the day, Ashwati S. Dash, who is a techno legal manager of Aspartica Biotech Private Limited. She has seven years of experience in R&D, project management, IP management, and regulatory affairs and to total quality management. She is a recipient of scheme for young scientists and technologists fund by the Department of Science and Technology Grant Award, DST, SYST. She is a key investigator in phase year project funded by Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council, co-investigator in IDEA2 POC grant by the government of Karnataka, she is a recipient of Karnataka State Council for Science and Technology funded project. She has done her MTech in pharmaceutical operations and management from Bits Bilani, PGD in intellectual property law, National Law School, India University, Bangalore, and BE in biotechnology. Her competencies include expertise in patent and trademark, IP management, she has served as MR for implementing quality standard as per ISO 9001-2015, FSMS, FSS standards, and WHO GMP. She is a content writer who served as co-editor of uh, Intercollegiate Magazine Biosync and member of editorial team for departmental newsletter. She is, uh, award, she is a recipient of the following awards. Finalist in National, uh, Young Innovator NAS Challenge Award 2016, Alumnus Entrepreneur Award by uh, Sir M. Vishwaraya Institute of Technology, DST SYST Grant Award. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being here and uh, address our participants. We are, lit, uh, we are really honored to have you here and uh, really uh, spellbound uh, seeing all your law. Age. Thank you so much for joining us, ma'am, and we are looking forward for your sessions. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I am also very uh, delighted uh, to be uh, able to speak today to you all of you. And I hope uh, yesterday's session was um, uh, very insightful for all of you. And this is a continuation to what happened and what was explained yesterday uh, by Mr. Srinivas BV. Um, and I hope I do justice to the topic and uh, it would be very nice if uh, we make it an interactive session. Any doubts you get in between, you can ask, you can stop me, no problem. I'll try my best to answer your uh, queries and questions. Uh, so I'll uh, start then. I'll share my presentation. Uh, it is the same audience as yesterday, uh, ma'am. Ma'am, almost a 75 percentage of the uh, I mean, uh, participants are same, ma'am. Okay, fine. So you can see my slide, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so good morning, everybody. Uh, my topic for today is specification, preparation, and drafting. Uh, I am going to touch up a little bit on uh, patents, which was covered extensively yesterday, but uh, just to get a flow of uh, things into drafting. Uh, so I'm going to give a small touch up on what patent is. And uh, most importantly, uh, why it is important to do something called as a prior art and where you can do it and how you can do it. And then get into specification drafting, uh, different 
types of uh, specification, patent specification drafting, what are the contents that are there in drafting. And uh, towards the end, I'd like to just uh, log in and show you how the uh, IP, Indian IP website looks like once you log in from an agent's login and um, where, how the filing process looks. Just a gist of it, I'd like to show you. Uh, so just a minute. Yeah, so um, intellectual property, it is uh, nothing but creation of mind, uh, which needs some protection. Otherwise, uh, one thing is that it is it can be easily copied and taken it forward by some other person, and it can be converted into of some economic uh, 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 advantage by the other person. So as faculties and students, we work on so many different projects. It can be something related to uh, science, life science, or any other domain. Uh, so you need to protect your invention so that you can take it forward. You can take it forward yourself. You can convert your, uh, uh, you know, invention into a product and commercialize it. Or uh, there are a lot of uh, options uh, given to universities and industry institutes where there are tie-ups happening with industries. Industries license out these technologies developed by institutes like yours uh, so that they can commercialize it. So you get a financial benefit for working on this invention and developing it. And uh, it is also reaching the public, uh, the sole purpose for which you started working on the invention. Uh, so um, for doing that, it is important that you protect it. And for protecting itself, there are a lot of these bodies like BIPO, Indian Patent Office, specifically for India, uh, which are working towards uh, facilitating us to protect our invention. It can be a patent, it can be trademark, that is to protect our brand. It can be a copyright. It can be a design, industrial design, any aesthetic design. So these are the different, uh, you know, areas where we can get protection under the intellectual property law. So patent, we all know, it is a monopoly right which is given to a person or an organization uh, for the disclosure of an invention. So patent, it is very clear that you develop an invention, you are going to disclose it. And that is getting disclosed through your application, through your specification. And the need for the disclosure is so that any person skilled in the art can take it forward and can also use it uh, for uh, their own. So you know that patent, you are getting the grant for 20 years. After 20 years, you are no longer the owner of that patent. So it is in the public domain. So after 20 years, even if that in invention is uh, so feasible and it is of utmost important to the public that it is required even after say 20 years, any person skilled in the art, any other industry can take it forward and do the manufacture of it so that it reaches maximum number of people. So that is the major agenda of uh, patent law and how the patent law is constituted uh, all over the world. So the advantage of patent, like I was telling, is that it has it gives you a strong market position. It gives you a higher returns on investment and a competitive advantage because you are the holder of the patent. You have all the rights in the market to manufacture it and stop somebody else whom you know is manufacturing it. So you have the legal rights in your hands and opportunity to license or assign your invention. This is mainly for institutes, universities, lecturers, faculty, students working on innovations where you can develop a beautiful product and then you can license it to industries because industries are looking for technologies where they can take it forward and you know commercialize it and it is also an additional value to the corporate band or the organization's reputation so uh, before i get into specification i was telling you that i'll just cover a bit about prior act uh, so um, indian law and practice basically indian patent law basically it works on the first to file system that is nothing but if you are the first person to file, if you are filed on first and somebody else has filed the same invention on second, you get the priority. You get the priority because any day uh, when there is any objection or something, you are the first person who have filed it. So you get the priority over that invention. So that is why priorities, prior, prior art or patent search is very important. Uh, so as um, academicians, when we work on some publication, we work on some research work, we do something called as a review of literature. This is similar to that. It is to understand that whatever invention that you're working on, what is the global status of that invention? 
you understand uh, say you want to i'm from a life science background so i'll give you examples which is relevant to me which i know uh, so when you want to work on a plant and you want to extract some molecule from it so you have a particular process of extraction which will give you a better yield say so before you start doing your experiments put all your money into it and you know buy all the chemicals and everything it is important that you do a basic prior art to understand what is the status of this particular uh, research work in the globe and in india so that is why <coughs> sorry prior art is done so here you will be able to filter out so prior art is done not only with patents it yeah, you should also do uh, definitely do it with uh, scientific journals you have a lot of websites like science direct health fever and all these uh, publication platforms where a lot of um, articles and research work will be published then you also do um, that which is which you must be very well aware of then there is a specific uh, um a set of websites okay free websites which are databases which are available where we can do a prior art uh, search of an invention so that you are sure before you start your work that there is no similar or close to similar invention uh, of similar work uh, relevant to your invention and hoping that there is isn't so that you can start your work with that so basically why it is done it is to save embarrassment because you do one year work and then later you realize that it is already being done it is already a work which has already been published in several uh, platforms it's a, there's a patent granted for it uh, it is to save your embarrassment save your money and also save the time that you spend on it because if there is a work which is similar work which is already done you can refer that uh, work and probably work on improving you know find out the limitations in that work and improve it to you know increase the yield or get better bioavailability and many other things which has much better economic uh, significance so uh, when you do a prior art search now i'll get into patents itself when you do a prior art search of a patent um, it is uh, important to know that anything to be patented uh, it should be novel it should have a um, inventive step and industrial application okay when i say novel it means that it should not have been published in any platform prior to your patent application so it should not be there in the public domain so when you do a patent search i'll show you how it is done when you do a patent search um you get a document which has the following information so you have to dissect the patent uh, uh, document in such a way that you understand it uh, and uh, you know to get the information that is required by you so you will get to know at what uh, in what particular domain that particular patent is uh, uh, you know filed uh, what are the claims okay that is what is the legal scope of that patent and also you will get to know the legal status of the patent now i said that uh, patents are granted for a period of 20 years and during this 20 years um the patent holder has to maintain the patent okay and he has to pay a certain fee to the uh, ip office and if he doesn't do that's when the patent becomes abandoned and also after 20 years it is again open to the public domain so or so these these are the different uh, legal status that you get to know so you get to know whether the patent is granted whether it is abandoned or whether it is open whether it is completed to 20 years and it is open for uh, public use so you get to know that you get to know who the applicant is who who is the owner of the patent and which particular class or family that patent falls into so these are the some uh, important information that you get now as researchers or as students when you look for um, a patent document you see the legal status you want to say work on something and you get a patent okay and you get to know that it is a patent which is abandoned in the abandoned state so what you can do you can take up that work okay and you can work on the improvement of the patent or you know uh, on work on a similar line so it's an uh, you know easy database that is available for you to start working on so that is one advantage about um, doing a prior art um, so you do a patentability patentability search uh, you uh, get to know the validity of the patent you get to know whether uh, you know uh, by working on this particular in invention will you be infringing on somebody else's patent and also what technology trends are you know happening on the global scale that is called as a landscape search these are some detailed searches uh so when you go to any uh, databases uh, there is a database called as patent scope by wipo uh, there is european database called as u space net there are uh, japanese chinese databases and there is this google patent database also and indian database which is called as uh, inpas so these are different free databases which are available where you can put in keywords 
and search. Okay, you can put in keywords in the title. You can put keywords in the abstract, description, drawing scripts, anywhere you put the keywords so that you get the maximum number of hits and you get to get the maximum number of uh, patent uh, hits which are relevant to your work. So these are, um, I'm just going to share. This is uh, this is uh, how uh, the um, patent bases uh, databases help uh, students to take their uh, invention forward, like I mentioned earlier. And you're aware about the non-patent literature, so I'll not uh, get into the detail of this. So these are the different, uh, uh, you know, free databases which are available: U.S. Patent Data uh, Office, Google Patents, U.K. IPO, Inpas. The second one is the uh, Indian Patent Database. Um, I can, if there is time, I can also open the, some of these uh, databases I can show you if uh, it is required. There are uh, paid databases. So a lot of these uh, patent agents and patent agent offices, uh, they subscribe to these uh, paid databases. They have an annual fee and maintenance fee and all those things. Uh, the thing about this is that you get a detailed report. Any keyword you put, you get a detailed report generated summarized report generated with gradings as to how each of these uh, prior arts are relevant to your uh, um, invention. So in free databases, it is your uh, you know, effort, your uh, mind you have to put in and dissect and understand what is there in the prior art. In um, pay databases, it is the easy uh, you know, list of uh, relevant prior art that you get in your hands. So this is how the Indian patent um, uh, search system looks like. Uh, like you can see over here, um, these are the different fields where you can search. Okay, you can so put keywords in the title. If you don't want to put in the title, you can put it in the abstract. You can put it in the complete specification. So patent has something called as a description, you know, part description. So under the description, you can put your keywords. Or if you know the patent number, you can directly put the patent number here. Or if you know the applicant name, uh, say your university is the applicant and you know somebody wants to search, they can just put the university's name over here and then it will display all the patents that have been filed uh, by the uh, filed and published. So, uh, so like I said, uh, when you file a patent, it takes 18 months for it to get published. It gets published automatically on the 18th month from the date of your priority or from the date of your filing, whichever is the earlier. So 18th month, it gets published. Once it gets published, it comes into this database. Now there are provisions from the uh, Indian Patent Office where publication can be done expedited also. That is, you don't have to wait for 18 months. You can get it published um, after filing the patent. Immediately, you can request for uh, publishing the uh, uh, patent into the patent uh, database. This is how Google Patents looks like. This you all must have seen. So I just put a small search called as coronavirus. And so how many hits are there? Around 15,000. This is not a very specific search. You put specific search, specific uh, protein, uh, specific antibiotic or vaccine, and then search it, you will get, you know, lesser number of hits. This is patent scope, WIPO's uh, um, patent database. Also, every patent has a classification number. So based on the classification number also, in WIPO, you can search for the patents. This is European Patent Database, which is called eSpaceNet. This is also a very good patent database uh, where you can put in your requirement and you get a number of hits. So um, should I go into, should I show you people uh, how uh, the patent databases look or shall I move forward? If anyone's interested, I can go into it. Ma'am, you, uh, you know, you can just get into this free database where we as a initially can do a prior art search. Sure, I'll just show you now. One second. You can see my screen, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. First, I'll go to Google Patents because it is the easiest here. You go to Google Patents. Here, anyone has any uh, thing that I want to put in, any particular invention that they're working on? If you can give me some keyword, I'll put that particular keyword and we'll see what are the hits which are coming. IOT in agriculture, ma'am. IOT in agriculture. Okay. 
this would be a little broad i think but let's see what are the hits which are coming just a minute it has got um, stuck so these are the number of hits which have got which you have got i am not much aware about the subject but if you can see here these are the different patents which are there on the on the go soil sensors and control methods for agriculture method of recovery and improving soil fertility etc so i'll just click on one of it okay i'll just click on the first one and see details about this particular patent sorry about the lag it's a little slow so this is the title of the patent okay and if you can see you can see the bibliographic uh, details over here now this particular patent it is not granted but it is in the pending stage that is it is published okay it is not yet received the grant the priority of this patent is 2013 and now it is in this uh, now this is the detail which you get now you can see the details about this patent and which uh, country it belongs to now if you go down you will see the detailed description of the patent here what are they trying to cover under the detailed description they have mentioned the background of the information so in invention they have covered some prior art which is relevant to their invention so as you go down you will get the detailed description about this particular invention from here from the brief summary of invention you will get to know the novelty the inventive step and what this invention particularly covers usually a patent document is a very long document so as you can see it contains a detailed description and there are all depending upon the type of invention there are also drawings which are submitted so there will be a particular section under the description where people mention uh, the features of the diagram to understand the numbers are given to the diagram and the features are explained over here features features in terms of the novelty is explained over here so this is a detailed description about the invention and another important thing about the patent is the claims claim is nothing but it defines the legal scope of your patent um, uh, so what your patent is protecting is shown in the claim i'll explain what claim is and all that in the coming slides but you can see this these are the claims of the patent any other search uh, you want me to do ma'am Uh, being a computer science professor i thought i can do something in iot in agriculture probably we can have something on management something like that means is that possible for fish meal retail retail management retail management uh, would it be like a software no it is something like a recommendation which can be given to the uh, government okay so again ma'am uh, if it is a, is it like a uh, when you say retail management because i am not very well aware over this field ma'am you can even search up the content which you are comfortable with and working with ma'am maybe on food technology yes 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 that we can do yes i show it you another another database over here so another database is the e space net which is the european uh, database again there are quick searches where you just put one particular keyword and search and there are advanced searches okay where you can filter out the keywords you can list a number of keywords which are very close to your invention and then put the searches so now we'll just do a general search again i'll put iot in agriculture itself well. so these are the different patents which are there ground vehicle soil sampling etc now you click on one here first you get the bibliographic data who are the applicants who are the inventors 
okay and what status it is so this is the different and then you get the abstract of the patent and when you filter it out over here you can see the different um, you know parts of the patent you can see the description separately okay which field it belongs to what are the different uh, um, inventive steps involved in the patent okay and claims legal family so all these things are the important things that that you can see under a patent also it can be downloaded as a document from where you, you know you can do your further work so I'll, now i'll show you uh, indian uh, patent uh, search system you go to impass it's called impass in short so this is the indian patent search system here you can search in the title, you can search in the app, uh, abstract, you can search in the specification. So I'll just put in the abstract, IOT, agriculture, X, Y, T. These are different, um, um, because we didn't make it a very advanced search, it was very, uh, you know, um, uh, broad. It covers a lot of other things which are not very relevant to agriculture also, which can be, again, uh, you know, put down. So here, here itself, you can see the date of application. This is the latest one, date of application. In what status it is, okay? And if you click on this, You can click on the patent number itself. Here, you'll get to know what is the classification number, which field this particular belongs to the field of invention, and the uh, detail about the inventors and the applicants of the uh, patent. Complete details. Here also you can see the application status. I think it's a little so anyways in the application system uh, status you can see uh, now it is already told that it is published after published the next step would be to request for an examination so you get to know uh, what is this particular uh, status that uh, uh, this particular invention is. is once it is published it is the uh, um, uh, duty of the inventor or the applicant to request for an e examination only when you request for an examination the examiner will pick up your file and examine your document so once he examines your document he will have a set of queries which he will send it to you in the form of a first examination report it's called an fer so that time what happens once you uh, request for an examination uh, this particular call gets filled when it is under when, when somebody when an examiner has picked up your uh, file then it comes under under examination and that's how this um, process goes and then if it is granted uh, it, it is shown as a grant over here and anybody can uh, see the documents anybody uh, in on this website can see how the uh, complete specification is filed so you can see how the complete specification is filed by this particular applicant over here So the diagrams which are there, the claims which are covered, all these things can be inferred from here. That's it. I'll get back to my presentation. So that was about uh, the databases. So um, anytime you start working on something, uh, you can pick up InPass, you can pick up eSpaceNet and Google Patents. These three can be an easy uh, free databases which are available where you can search uh, for the kind of work which is happening, what are the statuses and how you can take your invention forward. So now comes how can I get a patent in India for my project idea or concept? So first thing you need to ask yourself is that is your idea patentable? So yesterday, I think this was covered uh, for any 
um, a patent to be patentable when an examiner picks up your exam or your patent uh, document uh, or application three things he keeps in mind okay three, there are three checklists that whether it is novel so he does his own prior art and sees that whether this particular invention is already published by somebody else somewhere even if you have published it becomes it works against your patent it will be a prior considered as a prior art and uh, it it can it can be an issue in getting a patent grant and then he checks whether it has an inventive step it cannot be just a mixture of two different um, chemicals together without any uh, you know technical advancement um, just by some uh, amalgamation a patent cannot be granted uh, that's one thing and also whether it has an industrial application so any patent you apply for it should have an object it should have an object to say um, solve some issue or uh, uh, work on the limitations of an existing work where you are you know giving an advancement it should have uh, then it should have an it can be easily replicated in an industrial atmosphere and it can reach mass number of people so that is the um, thing so you need to um, gather information about your own patent okay which field of invention whether it is in the field of biotechnology whether it is in the field of computer tech science and do a background study what are the materials used okay and one important thing that you need to gather about is that what is the best mode of um application of your invention so these are the some things that you need to gather i already explained this these are some check checklist novelty inventiveness industrial application and there is something called as non patentable subject matter that is section 3 of the indian patent uh, uh, law uh, which was covered yesterday i think where um, there are certain uh, inventions there, there are certain things like a discovery is not an invention it cannot be patented you know say on similar lines just amalgamation of two different things cannot be considered as a patent and unless it has an uh, advancement or technical advancement uh, so that is um, these are some checklists which are important this is again prior art now uh, when you go for filing your patent it is not just a patent document uh, you are going to request for filing when you are requesting for filing there are different forms involved form 1 is the request you are making where you are mentioning whether you also have a complete patent or a provisional patent i will tell you what these two are then are uh, you given your detailed specification of your patent which comes in something called as a form 2 and that has the other details in it so now we saw we saw two to three patents uh, two things that we got to know from them is that you get two different types of information from when you see any patent document first is the bibliographic information you get to know who is the applicant you get to know who is the inventor you know when it is uh, filed when it is published what status it is okay these are the information that you get what their address email address all these things you get from that particular first page then you get the detailed description of the patent which field it belongs to what are the claims what is the uh, specification and all these things will be covered in that so form 2 is the form which is common for both provisional and complete specification okay and uh, it it should be it should, it should include the as much as detail as possible relevant to your invention and when you say uh, type of application um I, i hope all of you know what is a provisional and a complete patent if not i'll cover it and apart from that there is conventional application pct application when you want to file patents not just in india but in other countries the pct is a unified application for different uh, international application and then there is patent of addition which is done if you want to add any invention to a particular patent which is either published or granted you can go for patent of addition so these are the different types of uh, patent filing so this is how the front page looks which has the bibliographic information and this is the uh, specification this was taken from the us patent office bibliographic information and the specification so um so there are two different types of uh, specification and uh, something called as a provisional specification and something called as a complete specification uh, provisional specification is when as an inventor um you know that you have an invention you have done some basic work but you are not very definite about what is the legal scope or what are the claims of that particular invention but you know there is an invention but uh, you cannot wait for another one year to work on it and then go file for a patent because you will lose the time by then somebody else will work on it and you will lose your priority 
that's when you have something called as a provisional specification where the minute you realize okay i have done a basic work and i know that this has an invention uh, i can go ahead with something called as a provisional specification a provisional application is a patent application uh, which is uh, filed in may, most cases without a claim without claims so what happens is that today you file a provisional specification you have got the priority of today's date now you get 12 years uh, i'm sorry 12 months from the date of uh, application of pro your uh, provisional specification to go ahead and file your complete specification so uh, in a provisional specification you have your title you have a brief description about your invention you it should be on a fair use basis where you have covered what your invention is about so that anybody who sees the uh, anyways i'll come to that uh, because provisional specification will not be published it is uh it is a document which gives you a prior art so within 12 months if you go ahead with a complete specification this provisional specification will be your basis so it should cover the invention that you're trying to cover okay and claims are not required in this so uh, like i said first to file is the thing over here so you secure your priority date by filing this provisional specification and another thing which is important over here yesterday um uh, you have come across some grants Uh, like i have got a grant from dst a uh, byrac so um every grant uh, is given for different um, uh, uh, you know a different type of work okay so for example you are in your uh, uh, ideation stage okay you are in an ideation stage or you are in a validation stage the proof of your validation is that you have done some basic work okay and the proof for that is that you have either done a publication and in certain cases where it's a very good invention and you cannot publish it right away you want to file a patent but you're not sure uh, that uh, you need some more work to be done before filing a patent and the funding agency is keen that you have a patent so the right way to go for that is that you go for a provisional application so a provisional application advantage is that you get 12 months of time to work on your invention to file your uh, complete specification that's one important thing that you have and another thing is that provisional application will not be published so within 12 months if you do not go ahead and file a complete specification this gets abandoned it gets abandoned automatically so uh, that's about um, provisional specification so things to avoid in a provisional specification is that um, the it should not be like uh, you know a, a a simple draft it should have some disclosure of your invention okay and uh, it should not be a skeleton of your complete specification so these are some important things that you need to avoid i already mentioned what so um another important uh, advantage of a provisional specification is that application is that you can mention uh, that your patent is pending to any of the funding agencies because even they understand what a provisional application is that if, uh, within 12 months you'll be going at so this is like a um, assurance um, about your invention and that it will be taken forward so coming to a complete specification drafting so your um, complete specific so um, either you go for a provisional application and take 12 months time and then file for a complete application or you directly go to your complete application so today only you are sure that okay my invention is in place and i can go for a complete application you can directly go for a complete application so um, it is a techno legal document it is not a just a technical document it is a techno legal document because it covers the scope legal scope of your application say tomorrow somebody else uh, copies your invention this particular uh, document should cover all the legal aspects or uh, the legal scope of your invention so that it is a uh, you know a basis on which you can uh, prevent from somebody else um, copying your invention and uh, yeah so this particular usually a uh, complete specification is drafted and filed by a patent agent but it is important to have some information some awareness about how filing is done how priority is done and how a drafting is also done maybe the legal aspect will be covered by a patent agent because he will have good idea good knowledge about how to cover it into the legal scope but the technical aspect as an inventor you are uh, much more aware than the agent so you should be aware as to how you cover your technical aspects into your patent application so um, a patent application um, it contains a title it starts with a title 
so title should not be more than 15 words that is very important that uh, it should be within 15 words otherwise it does not get uh, it does not cover any characters post 15th word so it should be within 15 words that is important it should be precise meaningful uh, and it should not be um, ambiguous it should be definite okay and what are the things you should not put in a patent uh, title is that the word patent the name of the inventor or the applicant okay any any other languages abbreviations no abbreviations like etc should not be used and there should not be any fancy words used in a title a title should um, cover uh, in 15 words you should be able to give meaning to what your invention is so that is what some of the uh, you know titles are uh, over here a multi purpose machine um, weighing apparatus for visually challenged more than this multi-purpose machine, uh, machine, weighing apparatus for visually challenged. This is a good title. It covers what is, um, you know, what the invention is mostly about. It is short, precise, herbal hair care composition. So these are the different, you know, examples of title. You can also put a search and you can see, you know, how titles are uh, drafted. So one, so first thing is the title in a complete specification. Then comes the field of invention. So your field of invention, it can be what particular field it falls into. If it's IoT for agriculture, it is in the field of computer science. Okay. Uh, if it is some extraction, it is in the field of uh, phytochemistry or it is in the field of broad field biotechnology. So this particular field of invention is also important because one of the reasons is that uh, when it goes for examination, it goes to the that particular um, examiner okay who uh, has a background of this particular field so that is an important thing that you when you give a field of invention uh, uh, it is important to specify which particular uh, field uh, it falls into um, then uh, there is a particular way in which the field of invention has to be written you it can start with the present invention relates to the field of biotechnology um, uh, in uh, 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 the present invention relates to the field of um, agriculture sciences. So that's how you, you know, uh, mention the field of invention. Then comes the objects of the invention. Um, objects of the invention covers what is the final objective of your patent, you know. Uh, any patent should have industrial application that is important. It should have some uh, use, end use, uh, which is benefiting somebody who is using it. So that object is very important because when uh, an examiner, um, you know, goes through your uh, application and it feels that there is no object only for this particular invention, there is no application, then it will not be granted unless it has a final application in the industry or in the public use, it is of no use, right? Only then it can be granted a patent. So it is important to put the object. So objects can be multiple or it can be one particular object. And this is how it should be mentioned. So what is the primary or what is the principal object of the invention? The principal object of this invention is to uh, provide a herbal hair care formulation. Okay. Uh, so another objective of this invention is to provide um, anti-dandruff uh, properties for this particular uh, hair care formulation. Another objective. So you can keep on adding what are the objectives of this particular invention. So this is how it is drafted. Then comes the summary. Mm, summary is also an important aspect because it covers the novel features of your invention. What are the distinguishing novelty or novel feature of your invention? That should be clearly covered uh, in the summary. And there is also a way to draft your uh, summary. So you start with this. <clears throat> the main aspect of the present invention is to provide what is the invention that you're providing? You're providing a composition for hair care formulation comprising of say so and so herb, okay? It is another or one of the aspect of the invention to add a particular chemical component which has anti-dandruff properties, okay? And then you another, uh, so this is how you, you know, draft your summary so that it covers the novel features of your invention. Then comes to the uh, background of the invention. Um, 
so this is so you do a prior art right after you do prior art you get a number of searches you filter 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 all the uh, searches and you get say 10 uh, prior arts which are similar to your application but uh, there is there are some distinguishing features of your invention from the prior art so um, that's when um, you uh, uh, draft your background of the invention where you mention what is the um, invention that is prior art invention all about and what are the limitations of that invention and towards the end, you put a say a para telling how you are overcoming that invention through your uh, through or overcoming these limitations of these inventions through your invention. So that's how. So points to remember while drafting a background art is that the background section should be fairly short and should provide introduction about the field of the invention. So you have ten prior arts. For each of these ten prior arts, you should have a brief introduction. Okay, what each one of them does. Okay, and then it should disclose about the limitations of the prior arts or differences of the prior art from your idea. That is important. And it should not disclose, it's not necessary to disclose the novelty of the proposed invention. And then I should not contain any derogatory word, you know, and all these things. It's important that you only mention what is that in, in, in invention and what is uh, the limitation and how you are overcoming that limitation. That is important over here. Abstract is also an important component over here followed by the title. It should not be more than 150 words. It will indicate clearly the technical to field to which the invention belongs, technical advancement of the invention as compared to the existing know-how, and principle used or principle use of the invention, excluding any speculative use. And it should, it can also, you can also include the, any chemical formula or any other things which are to find are important for your invention into the abstract. Then comes the, so after your title, after your abstract, summary, background, object, field of invention, then comes the detailed description writing. So you have covered most of uh, everything in the other parts. Here, what you will be covering is what is the best use, best method of use of your invention. So that anybody who is skilled in this particular art, skilled in computer science, skilled in life sciences, is able to replicate it. That is the idea of patent. Like I said, initially, anybody skilled in the art should be able to do it. So usually in patent uh, detailed description, uh, if it is a formulation, the formulation is given, okay? Uh, uh, the different, uh, so when you say best method, uh, form, it cannot be one particular ratio all the time. It can be a combination of ratios. So all the ratios are mentioned, okay? And then uh, best method of production, say how you process it, what is added first, what is added next. So a, a set of examples are given which can be followed to arrive at that particular end product. So that's how a uh, detailed description is written. Uh, then comes claim. So like I said, claim is your legal, covers the legal scope of your invention. This is what gives you a legal, whatever is there in the claim is what you, what gives you the legal protection for your invention. So uh, claim also, there is a particular way, a particular format for writing a claim. Uh, uh, so there are different types of claims. Okay, I'll cover two basic types of claims over here. There is independent claim and then there is dependent claim. Uh, indica independent claim is a standard standalone claim. Okay, it uh, it um, it is it is a broad claim. It covers all the important characteristics of an invention. Now, depending upon this independent claim, you put another para where you say, um, as claimed in claim one, you write certain important aspects in claim two. Okay, so uh, these are the claims which are depending on the broad claim. So this, these are different formats in which a claim is written. So if you see over here, one sentence of a claim, whether it is a dependent claim or an independent claim, it, it should have a preamble, it, sh it should have a transitional phase, and it should have a body. Okay, when I say preamble, you mentioned what that particular system is. Say it is a weighing system, okay, a weighing system for now comes a uh, you know, uh, transitional phase. Transitional phase is nothing but it is a connecting phase. Okay, there are different examples of transitional phase which is given by the Patents Act itself. Uh, it can be the comprising, it can be constituting. So these are the different transitional phases that you can use to connect your preamble and your body. So a weighing system comprising 
now comes your body a body your body it can be uh, sensors uh, comprising a metallic um, display it can be a display digital display it can be sensor so th this is how a uh, claim is uh, drafted yeah so for example if you see over here a weighing apparatus that is your preamble comprising is your um, uh, transitional phase and this is your body a weighing balance electric circuit power supply source so uh, this is your broadest claim this is your independent claim now comes a dependent claim the second point is a dependent claim on the first independent claim so the apparatus as claimed in claim one wherein the weighing balance comprises of beam okay a weight measuring pan metal strip and bracket now comes another dependent claim which is dependent on the claim two so the apparatus in claim two, were in the metal strip. So here you have mentioned there is a metal strip. Now you are telling that that particular metal strip is freely suspended at the middle of the bay. So this is how you connect between your independent and your uh, dependent uh, claims. So I have covered um, what a specification should contain. Um, uh, uh, what are the uh, you know different uh, segments of a specification and how exactly it can be drafted now uh, only covering detailed how to write a detailed specification or how to write a claim these are minimum three hours uh, sessions each which we can take up if required but i have covered basically what a specification should be and how you should go ahead with the specification if you have any doubts, you can stop me and ask over here because I'll just get into the next segment after that. Any doubts? Ma'am, we can have the uh, participants query probably at the end of the session, ma'am. Okay, uh, okay, fine. It will be displayed in the uh, chat box, ma'am. There is okay, fine. clarification sort already. Dr. Rajendra Singh has told for filing complete application. Okay. Additional uh, fee. He has okay. asked. One second, ma'am. Okay. For filing complete application after provisional need to pay filing fee again. Is, a, is it uh, needed to pay that a filing fee again is the question posted by Dr. Rajay. Okay, for filing complete application after uh, need to pay. Yes, you have to pay a filing fee. Uh, once you file your, so provisional will be 1,600 and then you go for a complete application, it will be another 1,600. If you are an individual who is an applicant or uh, if you are a startup, uh, nowadays, uh, even institutes uh, have a reduced fee of 1,600. I... It's clear, right? Yes. Okay. Anything else you can ask me, um, I'll just be going ahead. So now you have done your prior art, you know how to draft your patent. Uh, now, uh, you uh, see, uh, any day a patent agent is trained to defend your patent because what happens, uh, application is one step, publication is another step, requesting for examination is one step, and then responding to that examination report that an examiner gives. That is where you need the skill so that you cover the legal aspects, you know the acts, okay? It's important to know the acts when you are patent act, when you're drafting a patent and when you're responding to an examiner. So what happens, the step includes like this. Um, the examiner, he uh, sends you a report. Now, uh, you within six months, you have to respond to that examiner. So responding to that examiner is not a big thing, but responding in, in, where you are in the provisions of the act, that is important. And then what happens is that once the examiner is convinced, he will call you for a hearing. So that's when the prosecution comes where you have to, uh, you know, respond to the controller. So that's where the uh, patent agent comes into play. But um, you need the support of your patent agent throughout. But it is also, like I said, important that you understand how to draft and also how to file a patent. So that's why I was trying to cover it, uh, all these things. So I have already explained Indian patent. These are the different steps involved. You file for a provisional application, uh, then you uh, 12 months you go for a complete application or you directly go for a complete application. Um, then it gets automatically published from on the 18th month. 
uh, within 48 months from the date of your application, you have to request for an examination. And that is taken up by the examiner and he issues a, something called as a first examination report on an NPR, where you get six months time to respond. So depending upon your response, it can go to and fro or it gets closed right then and there. And then if required, they call you for a hearing and then goes to the process of granting. Now, after publication, there are chances where objections come in, then the route is completely different when the objection comes or after grant of patent also when an objection comes, how you respond to it and all those things. That's a uh, different uh, timeline which comes in if there is an objection. Another thing that I wanted to cover is that this is uh, Indian patent application. This process is if you want to file patent in India, but if you want to cover your inventions in other countries, uh, earlier, it was a very cumbersome uh, task because you need to go to different countries and file and they, later it was uh, unified into the PCT, a patent cooperation treaty where you can apply for these uh, different countries to the PCT mode. So once you have applied your complete patent in India, uh, you have the, uh, within 30 months, there are different phases in between, but within 30th and 31st month, you will be able to file your application in other countries of your choice. And, uh, which are a part of this particular treaty. So that is a unified method where the fees is also less and also the it's all online. You know, you can do it online and uh, that is how it is done. I just uh, wanted to log in into one of our um, patent agent login and show you how an application is done. I'll just take two minutes and then show you that. So you go to ipindia.gov.in. Here you have the login for patents, designs, trademarks, geographical indications. Okay, when you go under, I, I'm not, I'm not sure how many of you all have seen this website, but you have seen, you know that you get the act book from here, you get the rule books from here, you get the manual guidelines and everything. You get the details of the forms required and the fees for each form. Every detail is mentioned over here. So if you want to go for filing your patent, you go for comprehensive e-filing. Under this comprehensive e-filing, you have this something called as e-filing patent. Here you have to click. Similarly, if you want to file trademark, you have here designs, geographical indication also you have here. And like I showed you the public search for patents, there are also public searches for trademarks, designs, Okay, and here, this is an electronic register of patent agent. Uh, this, anybody who clears the patent agent exam. One uh, patent agent exam for this year is scheduled in May. Uh, application for that is completed, but usually in a, every year they conduct the examination. Once you clear that examination, you have to enroll yourself into this uh, register. So you become an Indian patent agent. So this is the register which contains the list of all the patent agents in India. Uh, so, okay, uh, let me go to this e-filing of patents. Here you have to put in the login. I'll just put in the login that we use. Okay, this is how um, patent login uh, looks like. Okay, so you can uh, select here to see different forms that you want to apply. Okay, form 18 is for uh, request for publication. Okay, and uh, uh, form one is the application form. Form two is the complete specification form. Each forms are different. Okay, so if you want to file a new application, say you go to new application and you click on this. Proceed to e-filing. Here, you need to select the type of your application. So like I said, there are different types of application. There is PCT, there is patent of addition, patent of division, etc. Now, here what we're looking for, it's either a provisional application or a con uh, complete application. Now, if it is a provisional application or a complete application, it comes under the uh, ordinary applications. 
So you cl click under this ordinary application. And here you click on the type of specification. Like I said, it can be either provisional or complete. Say complete. Here you have to describe. Now you will be uploading your document. You will be uploading your specification. You have to describe the number of pages because um, any document which exceeds 30 pages, the fee increases for every additional page. So that is why you have to mention the number of pages, number of claims also. If the number of claims exceeds 10, then for every additional claim, there is additional fee. So you have to mention the number of pages that an abstract is. If you have any drawing, drawings are not mandatory, but if your invention pertains, uh, uh, you know, it is relevant to a drawing and you have to show the drawing, you have to include that here. So this is the where you put the title of your invention, the address, okay, you sell. These are all basic information. You put the description here. You can, part of the description can be copy pasted and put here from your uh, specification. You can put your claims here. So in case you're filing for a, uh, uh, a provisional application, you need not put the claims. But uh, if it is a complete specification, you have to put your claims here. This is where you put the details of the applicant, detail of the inventor, and then save. So when you click on the upload button, only when I fill all the details will be able to go forward. But when you click on the upload button, uh, that's where you upload your relevant documents, relevant number of forms that are required for a, a complete patent uh, specification. So these are some important websites that you can go through. Uh, it, versus IP India. IP India covers all the important links for trademarks, designs, GI, and patent. Okay, that's one thing. And um, copyright website is another. Plant Authority website is another. WIPO. Uh, one thing about WIPO website is that anybody who's interested in uh, pursuing or improving their knowledge in patent, they can uh, enroll to some distance learning courses in WIPO. Uh, they have a general course called as 101, which is free, uh, where they cover, they give notes and they cover basic aspects of uh, a patent, IPR. So that's a very interesting course where anybody interested can take it up. I just wanted to also cover some career fields that you can take up if you're interested uh, in the field of IP. You can either be a patent analyst, patent agent is when you clear the patent agent examination, an IP lawyer. And uh, you can take up some courses like I have completed PG diploma from National Law School in uh, Intellectual Property Rights Law, uh, which is also a very interesting course where you gain a lot of knowledge and expertise about uh, IPR. Um, and you can be a patent uh, consultant, uh, IP and regulatory affairs in pharmaceutical industry. So these are different uh, uh, career opportunities also available in the field of uh, IPR. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, your session was really interesting and very insight uh, data have been shared, uh, particularly regarding this um, uh, agent as a carrier and uh, on different courses that we can do. Yes. They have asked few questions. Okay. Uh, is uh, no, What is the fees for individual person who is belong, who, who's not belong to IPR? Uh, fee for an individual person for filing patent is 1,600. So if there is any other question, you can ask. You can ask me any questions or... Uh... You can also free, free, uh, feel free to contact me if you have any doubts regarding drafting, any uh, detailed drafting session you want to undergo, that also we can help with. And there is no other query. Uh, so okay. for a request to Deepika to formally propose the vote of thanks. And the feedback is there in the chat, um, in the chat box. You can just pull in. Um, you know, once the feedback is not filled, we cannot issue the e certificate. That is the issue at our end because uh, the feedback will uh, by itself uh, 
um, you know, take, uh, done by the uh, software, which will take the printout of the, and it will be sending the e-certificate. So we cannot help if you haven't filled in your feedback. So kindly feed, uh, fill up the feedback and Deepika, you can formally propose the vote of thanks. Yes, ma. Good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor to propose the vote of thanks for today's session. I would like to thank the Almighty for making today's session a success. I extend my gratitude to our speaker, Ms. Ashwati Das, for taking the time to be a part of the FDP on research and IPR and for sharing her knowledge and insights. I thank all the participants who have taken the time out to attend today's session. A big thank you to our secretary and her associate secretary for their constant guidance and support. My special thanks to our principal, Dr. S. Padmavati, and Vice Principal Dr. S. Rukmani for giving us the encouragement we always need. Last but not the least, I would like to thank Dr. S. C. Deepa, our technical team, and our internal training team for all their support and coordination. Once again, I thank you all. Uh, thank you so much, Ashwati. Thank you. It was uh, very nice to interact with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.